We have delivered a comprehensive response, a global goal to triple renewable energy and double energy efficiency. It is the UAE consensus. And we have language on fossil fuel in our final agreement for the first time ever. This is how COP28 came to an end on December the 13th. The major talks centered around phasing out fossil fuels altogether. But the much debated New Deal stopped short of that. Instead, it called on countries to transition away from them. Still, a first in the history of the UN climate summits. Beyond the declarations, the event was marked by record-breaking participation, with more than 80,000 people in attendance. Among the crowds, we met up with Bill Gates to discuss his initial impressions on how the talks were going. So are you optimistic about what you've heard here? Well, you know, we're not going to make the most ambitious goals, but the thing that will let us come close is human innovation. Innovation to help people adapt, uh, and agriculture is a big part of that. Uh, there were some great announcements around uh, investing in better seeds uh, because the poorest are, who are farmers are going to suffer the most. The world will warm, and uh, you know, near the equator for a subsistence farmer, that can be a very big deal. Gates has long been an advocate in the fight to protect our planet. He spoke on a number of topics at COP, including how agriculture has been impacted by the climate crisis. You know, food is in some ways at the, the center of climate change. Uh, the main uh, vector uh, by which people suffer from climate change is uh, by having failed crops. A warming world has many implications for our global food system, affecting both crop and livestock production. Changes in temperature and precipitation, extreme weather events and an increase in pests and diseases are just some of the issues farmers face as a result of the climate crisis. But Gates says he is optimistic about the solutions on the horizon. Many of the technologies of our time, satellite photography, gene sequencing, gene editing, uh, incredible digital sensors that are very low cost and can be carried out into the field. You know, it's kind of phenomenal uh, how we can take this idea of improving seeds in a much faster cycle than ever been done before. Energy. Everyone uses it, but it comes at an ever-increasing cost to our climate. The world needs another breakthrough. In fact, it needs many breakthroughs. For Bill Gates, finding solutions to procure sustainable energy is a challenge he believes innovators around the world are fit for, and he is betting big money on it. So let's talk about breakthrough energy, because, uh, because that's the fund that you have set up, and that is you know, invaluable in supporting these more than 100 you know, innovative technologies to bring down that green premium as it were. How well are you doing? You know, what, what, what's, what's stand out to you at this point? We didn't want to invest in anything that wouldn't have a dramatic effect on uh, climate emissions and we wanted companies that could address every source of emissions, transport, industry, electricity, agriculture, buildings, everything. And I am stunned at how well it's gone. You know, it's a great team, uh, they're, these entrepreneurs are amazing. You know, we raised a second fund, we've spent that, so now we're raising a third fund. It's kind of amazing. Last year, companies backed by Breakthrough Energy showcased their work at COP28. What's the playbook for Breakthrough Energy? Well, there's a lot of activities that generate greenhouse gases, and the clean way of Doing those things today is very expensive, and so Breakthrough was created to fund innovative companies uh, that could actually do it a new way uh, that should be as cheap or even cheaper 
uh, than the dirty way. And so across every area of uh, missions activities, we have innovators uh, who are helping us figure out how to make it far less expensive. Founded in 2015, the group's primary initiative is to bring the global greenhouse gas emissions from 51 billion tons per year down to net zero by 2050. To do that, they've identified companies like TerraBase. The problem that TerraBase is working on solving is the problem of uh, scale. To address uh, climate goals, we need to be building two to three terawatts a year, every year, for about 20 years or so. The challenges that we're seeing are uh, the fact that uh, it takes too long to build a solar power plant because it's too much of a manual process. And so we have this really slow process that's very labor consuming. We're also tackling problems like remoteness of solar power plants. So we address that, those problems, by essentially bringing our automation, uh, digital automation lines to solar power plants. Bill, how does a company like TerraBase fit into the project that is Breakthrough Energy? Well, having lots of solar electricity, uh, which over time has gotten quite low cost and will get uh, even more low cost, uh, making sure that the construction part uh, isn't the limiting factor. So it's amazing as we have such ambitious goals for solar uh, to think now it can be done so much more efficiently. Health and climate change are inextricably linked. Heat-related illnesses, water and vector-borne diseases, food scarcity and poor air quality are just a few of the threats to our well-being that are associated with global warming. Last year's COP put health at the top of the agenda, with the summer dedicating a day to the topic. It's thrilling. Uh, to have a health-focused event at the COP. Kicking off the talks, Bill Gates said, our health is one of the most important reasons for taking action against climate change, as he championed new technologies that can help us adapt and counteract. Even in the face of climate, by investing uh, in these health interventions, we can make progress. Gates and then wife Melinda established their foundation in 2000 with a focus on global health issues. Well, they've since expanded the scope of their work, but improving health is still a primary goal, especially in regard to a warming planet. I've heard it said a number of times here that what we are negotiating is human lives. The heating we've seen today it means mosquitoes can live uh, higher up than before, and that's where a lot of African cities are. So in Ethiopia, the biggest city, Addis Ababa, has seen more malaria cases. When you have a big flood, then the mosquitoes thrive. Pakistan had a huge increase in malaria deaths after flooding there. Uh, also, diseases like thyroid and cholera, that when you, you have a flood, all the, the human waste you know, sort of gets spread around, and it's, it's not great. You know, we need to be smart enough that we're making climate progress and continuing, you know, not reducing the, the health dollars at all. The Global Institute for Disease Elimination, or GLIDE, is part of the Gates Foundation's efforts to tackle global health crises. GLIDE supports initiatives around the world that provide breakthrough research in illnesses worsened by climate change like the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Lima, Peru. There, a group of scientists is developing low-cost technology that can help forecast the spread of diseases in the Peruvian Amazon. Researcher Gabriel Corosco Escobar spoke to us via video call on their health monitoring initiatives. Climate change uh, put several challenges to the control of infectious diseases we face new trends for most infectious diseases. In the Amazon, this translates to, uh, into outbreaks of malaria, dengue, leptospira, and pneumonia. So what we are trying to do here is to improve what we have so far in terms of forecasting. 
to prevent um, deaths or uh, hospitalizations. We started doing uh, environmental surveillance, deploying drones, deploying weather stations, acoustic sensors, air pollution sensors. We transform all this data into inputs for our early warning system uh, model. Uh, so far, we are testing uh, the Venge model to produce early warnings up to four weeks in advance. Corosco Escobar hopes their models could become a blueprint for disease monitoring and prevention everywhere. We can deploy the same strategy in other parts of the world, in, in urban areas or in rural areas. So this is a way to adapt to what we are going to face in the next years.